Hello, everybody, and welcome to Churchy Chats with the Church Girl. I am super excited tonight, and, and for so many reasons. First of all, um, the month of July has been the she shed. It's been all ladies, and it has been uh, amazing. I'm going to miss the ladies when we start next month. I'll tell you all about next month later. But if this is your first time here, my name is Alicia Wiley. I am the owner and creator of A Church Girl, which started off as a clothing line and has kind of evolved into a lifestyle brand that seeks to inspire and uplift everyone we have the privilege of connecting with. And I have some amazing ladies in the she shed tonight. And I know y'all are used to me talking about how I don't know the people. Um, but tonight it's a little different. It's a little different. So Darylin, uh, she is Bishop Brister's daughter. If you're from the New Orleans area or you, you know, haven't been living under a rock, you probably know Bishop Brister. And um, so we connected. When did you when did you move back to New Orleans, Darylin? Oh, 2001. Was it like two with one? OK. So y'all, let me tell y'all, me and her and my sister, we would get together at these full gospel conferences <laughs> and we would link up and do everything but church. She would be like, all right, y'all, my dad said I got to go to church for like 15 minutes. And we'd be like, bet, we're going to go in church, let him see us. We're going to wave, pew, we out. We had the best time at these conferences. Y'all don't tell nobody. We had the best time at these conferences. And I'm just so glad to be reconnected with her. So glad to see her. And my sister, Ashley, let me tell y'all. So. Like I said, I have been um, sliding in people DMs. I'm going to just be honest. I have been sliding in people DMs and I have connected with so many great people via BCI, Black Christian Influencers. And she's one of the beautiful ladies that I found on Black Christian Influencers. So I'm so glad to have her here. And let me just tell y'all, she busted in the room with a lot of energy. So I'm glad to have her here tonight. And last but certainly not least, my blood sister, Aisha Elizabeth Wiley. I can't believe this is like government episode. Government. I cannot believe I made it to the 12th episode without having my sister on, but I'm so happy to have her here. She's my big sister. She's the one that I want to make proud. She is my protector. She is the one who, if I've been raging and upset with you, she's the one that's pulled me back and was like, <laughs> nah, sis, don't get them. Don't get them. I'll get them. Right. Um, so I'm so grateful for her and, and my parents and I actually had COVID-19 and I don't know, I have not said this publicly. I don't know what I would have done without her. She took care of all three of us. Um, and I just thank God for her. I thank God for her strength. I thank God for her letting us drive her crazy because I was like, okay, I need this, 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 and this, this. Okay. Now I'm hungry. Now I'm not hungry. No, I don't want to do this. No, I don't want to do that. But she was an excellent caretaker. So I just want to say thank you for that publicly, for all that you did for us during that difficult time. Okay. I'm talking, 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 <laughs> but I'm going to let the ladies introduce themselves. And then we're going to get right into our topics. Insecure fans. Listen, I need you to share this broadcast. I need you to get ready to chime in, get them fingers ready because tonight it's all about insecure. Now, let me say this. I am doing insecure in pieces. Next month, I'm doing like a men are from Mars, women are from Venus. So I want to save some of the juicy relationship stuff for next month. But we're going to get into this friendship vibe and all this Molly Issa stuff tonight right here on Churchy Chats. All right, Daryl, talk to the people, honey. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, as stated before, my name is Daryl Brister Austin. Um, Hailing from the great city of New Orleans, uh, Louisiana. A little bit about hey. me. <laughs> a little bit about me. Um, I dibble and dabble in a couple of different things. Uh, my husband and I are uh, both owners of the CND Agency, which is an insurance agency here in the Atlanta, Georgia um, area. Um, I'm also the founder and CEO of uh, Dace App. Real quick, Dace App is a streaming service. Uh, where you can go and listen to inspirational content from uh, pastors or inspirational leaders from all over the globe. And you can search by um, a particular topic. So say you need a message on grief or relationships, you can go um, on the, the website, dayserver.com and just look for messages that um, really can uh, really just bless you in whatever season um, of life that you may be in. I didn't know that, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. I have to I'm tell definitely going to check all that. Yes. And y'all check her out. Check her out. All right, Miss Ashley. 
Talk to the people so loves. Yes, yes. I'm excited to be in the house on tonight. My name is Ashley Avila, and I'm from Augusta, GA. Woo, woo. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I do a lot. I am heavily involved in the worship and fine arts ministries within the local area. I am definitely a lover of the creative arts. I'm talking about modeling, singing, acting, dancing. I've done it yes. all, I do it all, and I love it all. I'm currently working on my own personal project entitled You Are. Well, I'll be singing some songs that God has really given to me as I am a composer and a writer as well. Amen. Um, I hold vocal workshops. I teach music lessons, anything fine arts. And when God allowed me to do the fine arts and incorporate worship into it, I truly found my niche. So that's what I'm currently developing right now. Um, I just got married in January, so I know my husband is watching. Jose and Vila, I love you, baby. Mm -hmm. And I'm just glad that everybody's here tonight. And I pray that you guys get something from tonight's conversation. Okay. Okay. I love that you're just into all the arts. Sis. When, when I re-up on my uh, church girl stuff, I'm a holla because I need a model. I need Man, a model. Hey, I'm with you. Okay. <laughs> I need a model. I need a model. All right, Aisha, talk to the people. My name is Aisha Wiley. Of course, Alicia Wiley is my sister. Um, I live in New Orleans. I am the administrator and creative arts director at Life Center Cathedral. Um, I recently went back to school for computer programming and I finished in December. Um, I, found out, I found out yesterday that I'm one of a hundred up for an um, internship at Microsoft. So oh, I'm extremely God. happy about that. So <laughs> keep your prayers up for that. Um, I love to bake in my spare time and mostly here with my dogs and my family. <laughs> during, during COVID. During, during COVID. COVID. During COVID. Okay, y'all. So our other guest has joined us. So let me do a quick intro for my girl Keisha. Let me tell you how I connected with Keisha. Um, she bought a shirt from me somewhere, maybe online or something, and she posted a fabulous picture. And I was like, hey, sis, hey. Hey, you are rocking this. Hey. So I reached out to her. I reposted her picture, of course. Um, I, I, Keish, I don't remember if I sent you the stuff I was supposed to send you, but I was supposed to send her something else to model for me. But she's an amazing young lady. And I, oh, perfect. And I just want her to quickly introduce herself. And then we're going to jump into tonight's conversations. Talk to the people, Keisha. Hi, everyone. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Keisha Alicia. Um, I'm an attorney by day, but I love to blog, so I blog at night. I have a lifestyle blog where, you know, I talk about faith, fashion, and wellness. And um, like Alicia said, we met, I think it was um, at a conference I bought your shirt. It was like a Christian okay. conference years ago, like a women's conference, yeah. And I fell in love with her line, and you actually did send me that dress, and I rocked it. So thank you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, y'all, we are super excited about tonight's um, episode. I have been waiting to discuss um, this for a long time. I have been wanting to discuss Insecure for a hot minute, but I haven't because I was waiting on the right time and I thought this was the perfect time. Now, before we get into the actual Molly Issa dynamic and everything, I'm in this group on Facebook. It's an insecure group and it's a discussion group and boy, do they discuss, right? <laughs> it's a lot going on in that group, but somebody posted, um, do you think if any of them were Christians or if they had Jesus in their lives, you know, half of this drama wouldn't be happening. So, you know, people in these groups are very vocal and the comments, most of the comments were, um, well, that would be boring. If they were just all about Jesus, that would be boring. The second comment that I saw the most of, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be watching this anyway. I was like, well, all right. And then another one, one young lady was like, well, just because if they had Jesus in their lives, that doesn't mean that it would erase, you know, their issues and the things that they have right. to deal with. So I had a, I had a, a lot of thoughts surrounding this, but as far as you all are concerned, do you think Christians should watch shows like Insecure? Compared to <laughs> Christian shows? Like, um, or just period. Like, is this something that, because for those of you who don't watch Insecure, let me just let y'all know. It is um, a bit intense. 
You know what I'm saying? Like they don't hold anything back as far as language is concerned. They don't hold anything back as far as, you know, sexual relationships are concerned. Um, it's it's real, I guess I would say, you know, it, it's really straight to the point and it's no holes punched and it's definitely not a Christian program. But right. <laughs> do you think this is something that Christians shouldn't be watching? I mean, if you put that on the board, then everything else would have to fall under it. Like, what mm -hmm. other show can you not watch? You know right. what I'm saying? I don't think that it's bad to watch it. Now, I wouldn't watch it and maybe take advice from it or make decisions that right. they made or something like that. But I don't think watching it would do anything, you know, necessarily bad because then what, what are we exiting out? All everything we watch on television, but right. details. I mean, you know, like it would have to be. Yeah. What is the what is the okay? She said, "Don't watch it." So, what should we watch then? That's right. a really that's a really good point. You know, when you were asking that question, I started thinking about you know growing up, and you know, as a child mm -hmm. and when I was younger, there were certain things you know that I wasn't allowed to watch. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily because my parents said, "Oh, you're a Christian, you shouldn't watch that." I think, you know, now that I'm an adult, I think it was more of a maturity thing. Like, you know, those yes, were absolutely mature for me to be watching. So I don't know if it's necessarily a, if you're a Christian or a believer, you shouldn't be watching Insecure or Power or any other shows that may fall, you know, under that realm. I think it just depends on maybe where you are spiritually in your walk with Christ on mm -hmm. if you are mature mm -hmm. enough to handle the type of content. Um, that show on a television show like that. I mean, that's that's how Absolutely. I feel. anyway. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. Well, I would agree with that as well. I'm oh, sorry to cut you off. You can you can go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I'm yes. <laughs> no, I say um, I would agree with what everyone has stated so far. I feel like it's your personal conviction. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything bad. Like, of course, there's other shows. If you were, you know, exile insecure, there are a, a lot of other shows. They like, okay, well, we can't watch this. We can't watch this. So I feel like it really comes up to your personal conviction if you feel like you can watch it or not. Yeah. Right. What you say, I, Ash? I think we do have to be careful because I did grow up in a household where it was like, uh-uh, that ain't Jesus. Y'all need to turn that off. So it uh -huh. was like, oh, okay. So then as I got older and I got more exposed to culture that wasn't Jesus mm -hmm. culture, I don't mean the church, mm -hmm. I don't mean the band, but I just mean the Christian <laughs> culture. It definitely posed a lot of questions for me as a believer because I was all in like entrenched in God, but I was very naive to the things of the world. Okay. So when I got exposed to it, I was all the way open. <laughs> so I think like what Daryl was saying is you gotta be, you have to understand your maturity level. And I would say you have to know your triggers because I know right. personally there are certain things that I cannot watch. Right. Even though I'm grown now, I've know I've learned some things. I know some things, but no, there are certain things that if it comes on the TV, Ashley has to either fast forward or I gotta turn it off or I gotta do what I gotta do because you don't want to sure. live in a box. And I think sometimes right. as believers, we do that. We put ourselves in this box to where if it if it if it exists outside the scope of our faith. It doesn't exist, but that's not true. Right. There's so many things out there, but of course you have to be careful to your level of exposure because you know, the word talks about watching the gates to your soul. So you can't sure, watch sure. everything. You can't listen sure. to everything. Mm -hmm. And so you have right. to be able to use the word as that filter, but then also understand, okay, so this is what's going on because in all honesty, I've identified with Issa and Molly and various characters at various times in my life. But like right. she was telling, she was saying, don't use it as a a place to pull advice from or to let that be your example when our example should be the word. Absolutely. And even, I'll even take that a step further because there are times in my life that songs will come on the radio that I listen to all the time. But just because of where I am mentally that day, I have to turn that right. off. Right. Yeah. Because I'd be like, no, nope, mm -hmm. yeah. this is going to take me yeah. right to the wrong place. This yeah. going to take me right to do the wrong thing yeah. because of where my mind is. So yeah. I think, you know, like Daryl said, it wasn't so much about you can't watch this because you're a Christian. It was more about your maturity level. And I think that we are responsible for um, gauging that 
each and in each and every individual, you know, situation and circumstance. So as it relates to not watching something because you're a Christian or not listening to something because you're a Christian, of course, that's an individual thing. But like Aisha said, where where do we start to cross the line? Are we not going to, you know, do a whole lot of stuff? Are we not going to wear mixed fabrics? Are we not going to eat fish with scales? Are we not going like, to, if we going to do it, are we going to eat only cold like, meat? Like, if we going to do it. <laughs> You know, what level do we say, you know, that we do what we do? So I think that it's very important just to kind of gauge that situation. Now, I'm going to um, go into this. I'm going to ask you all this right before we go to commercial break, because I want to get I want to know if you're team Isa or team Molly. So we're going to determine that from each of the ladies and we're going to take a commercial break and we're going to dive into all things Isa and Molly. So, Daryl, are you team Isa or team Molly? You know what? I know you were gonna go with me. <laughs> okay. You Let felt that in your spirit. <laughs> I did. I said, you know, we always been connected like that. I just <laughs> okay. No. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. Okay. I can't. I don't really want to pick a team because I honestly can feel both sides. But if you're gonna make me yes. choose a team, huh? Do I have to choose a team? No. No. You the, don't have okay. to. So the reason I'm saying that I can't choose a team is because my best friend and I, we've had this conversation about the two of them since the whole mm -hmm. you know thing was going. And honestly, I really can kind of see both sides. But if you're going to make me choose a side, I'm going to choose Molly. And I can't wait to tell you guys why. I'm sure I'm probably the only one. <laughs> OK, OK, OK. Ashley, <laughs> sis, we we can can we team Misa and Misa? I don't I don't combine them. Misa, how about that? We team Molly or we team Issa? <laughs> Man, definitely team Misa as we put it together. But if I had Okay, to, that's a new thing. <laughs> I, if I had no, no, because those relationships are so complex, man, and it's yes, hard to just yes. choose a side. But if I had to choose, I would say with this most recent season, season four, I would be teaming Seth, definitely. Okay, okay, Keisha, Keisha, Alicia. <laughs> um, for me, I'd have to say. Team Lisa. I definitely see both sides of the argument, but I definitely say Team Lisa. Okay, Lisa. okay. Yeah. Aisha, Elizabeth. I'm team nobody really, and I can't wait to tell y'all why. But if I had to choose, like, um, Daryl, I'm a gonna have to say I'm team Molly. Yes. Okay, okay, and I'm not even if telling y'all team who I am. I okay, <laughs> we're gonna go to these quick little commercial breaks and then we're gonna get into this good conversation. Don't yes. go away. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Hotight Brown Productions presents Listen to My Thoughts with J. Damian Brown on Facebook every Tuesday at 9.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen to My Thoughts, a Bowtie Brown production. Join the Life Center Cathedral for Morning Manor with Bishop J. Douglas Wiley Taylor, a time of prayer and fasting. Pray with us every morning at 5 a.m. for 21 days, beginning August 1st, only on Facebook Live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just a quick word about our two commercials that we just saw. The first one is our pastor of music. He's doing this new thing every Tuesday night, just playing from his heart. It's really awesome. Check it out. Um, the second one I'm going to be playing from now until... Um, our fast is over and on uh, August 1st. Our church is starting a fast, but we are doing um, a morning 5 a.m. prayer on Facebook Live. I want to invite everybody to join us. All you have to do is get up and roll over, pick up your phone and join us in prayer. If you want to fast with us, fast with us. The pastor has not given us a specific um, thing to fast from so you can do your own thing. But with all that we're going through, I just wanted to invite everybody to join us either in prayer or fasting or both. All right. Now let's get to this good conversation. All right. <laughs> so if you all are familiar with, um, well, you know what, wait, we had some good conversation I and mean, we had some good comments. Let me um, throw those up right quick. So as it relates to our conversation about should Christians watch it, um, Christian Elder said, Christian live, Christians live intense lives, so why not, right? Like Ashley said, there are things and circumstances that we can all relate to, even though it's not 
necessarily a Christian show, you know, absolutely agree. Veronica said, I don't think nothing's wrong with it because we are not living the lives of the actors, which is, you know, what Aisha said. Aisha said, you know, we're not necessarily looking at this for life advice or this is how I should live my life or I'm not modeling my life after these people. For some of us, it's really just entertainment. And Miss Karen, I'm going to just say she says she um, she loves the show. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you, Miss Karen. I appreciate that. Um, but Robert Grime made a good point. He said, if I'm not mistaken, um, if the whole if the whole not watching it is because it isn't a Christian show, then we would lose the actresses that Molly, I know I'm not saying that right, but Molly, because she's a devout, a devout Christian. Mm, and right. she is. Like, she's a devout Christian. She's a virgin. She had um, a special on HBO. She didn't curse. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was happy to learn that about her because I would have never known just watching Insecure, right? right. So, right. you know, sometimes, our, uh, sometimes things are a little deeper than... Um, what we use the surface. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple mm -hmm. people that say they're team Issa, no team Molly's in the comments so far. <laughs> so ladies, Dang, Molly. <laughs> no team I Molly so I far. I'm here <laughs> surprised. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, Issa is, I'm gonna try to quickly describe, you know, these two ladies. So Issa is what I would say a little more of a free spirit in that, <laughs> Um, her life is not quite as structured as Molly's, right? Issa, when the show, when she's introduced on the show, she's working at a nonprofit that she doesn't really love, but she doesn't hate, but it's it's enough to keep her going. As she develops, she quits the nonprofit and then she just doesn't know what she's gonna do with her life, right? right. She gets evicted, then she gets a job as an apartment manager, and then she decides to be an event coordinator. Like she's really figuring things out as far as her life is concerned. Molly, on the other hand, Molly is an attorney. You know, she's been working at this firm for all these years. Um, then she quits the firm and goes to a black firm, and it's not exactly what she thought. She has issues with relationships a little bit. Um, Issa does too. Issa does too. But what I find the most that people are saying that people, you know, combat about is Molly is so jealous of Issa. And she doesn't want Issa to be happy. And she's a toxic friend. Speak oh, on the toxicity that's not right. and all of this stuff. <laughs> so what do y'all think about this dynamic that's presented in, in this show? Between well, the two ladies. <laughs> Let's just say before, I'm ready to talk. They, both, they both they both need Jesus. Okay. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. But okay, I I became I think what kind of pushed me. I said at the beginning I didn't really have a team. I was what do we say, Misa? But Misa. I think just seeing all of the comments, you know, especially like on Instagram and on Twitter and on Facebook, like you know, mm -hmm. just different op-eds people were putting out. I guess I started to lean towards being Team Molly simply because I just couldn't agree with the reasoning that everyone mm -hmm. thought that Molly and Issa were having having disagreements. I do not think that it's because yeah. Molly is jealous of where Issa is or what Issa's doing or Issa's come up. That's just not realistic. That doesn't yeah. that just doesn't make make any sense. I think though that maybe Molly has just had an issue. Not an, I don't want to say an issue, but Basically, I feel like Issa has finally kind of figured out what her purpose is, and Molly is just not used to that. And so instead of Molly knowing how to communicate, I think they both need to work on their mm -hmm. communication skills, but instead of Molly yes. knowing how to communicate yeah. with new Issa, because Issa is more mature, you know, than she used to be. She uh -huh. doesn't know Molly as yeah. much as she her before. I think that it's just playing out in that way, but I don't in any way think that Molly is jealous of Issa because... I just don't really think that there's anything as both of them as friends. I don't think there's anything for each of them to be jealous of one another because they're just two very, very different people, which I think is the right. beauty of their friendship. So that's why I was team. Mom. Yeah, that's why. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on, ladies. Chime in. What's your thoughts? Man. Um. <laughs> for me, I feel like the reason why I say I, I'm team Issa. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to us. <laughs> Anybody, because I got a lot to say. That's you can go ahead. I'm trying to keep it. Come on. 
Okay, so like legitimately, like I said, I'm I am Team Misa because I'm actually for the mending of the friendship. But I do okay. think that it was interesting that a lot of people were like, oh, well, well Molly was jealous. And like Daryl was saying, no, that's not necessarily what, what it was. It's more like when their friendship began, they were both in different spaces. And so mm -hmm, now as the mm -hmm. friendship has grown, as time has gone on, both have matured, both have had to deal with themselves in a lot of different yeah. ways. Because a lot of people trip out about this most recent fallout, but y'all forget they fell out at the end of season one too, as well. Right, so like, right. Y'all see right now that they are... There is the breaking apart, but then there's the growing together. And I feel that mm. for both of the, these characters, if they're willing to fight for the friendship, it, there's really no bounds to it. I just felt bad for Issa because, y'all, that block party episode, it was rough for me. It was yeah. rough. It was, it was hard. <laughs> like, I'm both of them know. Molly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna ask y'all this, and I, ladies, Aisha and Keisha, y'all hold your thoughts right fast. Since you brought mm -hmm. that up, would if if your friend comes to you now, this is a new relationship, right? Your friend comes to you and says, "Will you talk to your boyfriend about helping me out with something?" And you say, "You know, I really don't feel comfortable doing that. This is a new relationship. I really don't want to." you know, start asking for favors early on, would you be upset if she went to another place, went through another avenue to still get the favor from him? Would that upset you? No. I would go I wanna, and clarify. I, like, I would say I, when I meant, when I told you I didn't want you going to him, I meant period. Like not through me or another source. Like I didn't, <laughs> right. I didn't feel attached to him. <laughs> so I didn't I don't want you to go ask my sister to talk to him or his friend. But I yeah. wanted to clarify that. And I would have said that bothered me, but I wouldn't have gotten that upset. I would have told her how right. I felt about it. Yeah. And straight up and been like, look, I told you that maybe you misunderstood when I said I didn't want you to go to him, but I meant period. Now, how you take that is how you mm -hmm. take it. But I mean, I wouldn't hold that like that. Right. I just feel like I wouldn't have even said no, though. I mean, I know how Issa has, you know, she'll get things, she'll drop the ball. But I don't know. I'm just that part. If I'm thinking about now, I'm thinking about myself. But I'm just that person like I ride for my friends. So if I ever have a connection, you know, in any kind of way, I'm going to throw you the ball. Now, when you get the connection, if you don't do it, what you're supposed to do with it. I just feel right. like I can rest in knowing that I did hook you up because I had the resource, you know, to do so. Sure. So that's right. the one thing that Molly did where I was like, ah, I can't really agree with you on that one because I just don't understand why you wouldn't help me. Because it was up to him <laughs> anyway. It was up to him if he helped anyway. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How you got exactly. there. Yeah. It was up to him. But let me say this. Let me say this. I, I, I slightly understood Molly's point because Molly, um, Molly was known for sabotaging situations, right? She was known for sabotaging mm -hmm. her relationships. So I don't need nothing right. else to sabotage something that may be good for me. You know, when people ask right. you for stuff, it can be hard to kind of slide in that hookup thing when you first get with somebody or when you first become friends with somebody, even in platonic friendships. You know, you'd be like, well, I don't want them to think that I'm just after them for the hookup. So, eh. I'm like, Daryl, and I want to think that I would have found a way to make it happen for my friend. But I also kind of understood her kind of being like, eh. and when her stuff fell through. See, you didn't call on right. me to help you from the giddy up. You didn't right. call me right. to help you with your little black party from the from the outset. Right. But it was when something fell through on you. You want to run to me to save you. And I can't See, always do that. But Molly always that is really interesting. I that's think my frustration is she all, always saved Issa. Like she from season one, right. Molly was yeah. the saver. So I think her point, I think her frustration, I think where she was coming from was frustration. It wasn't that Issa was, she was hating. I just think that she was like, mm -hmm. look, I'm tired of being the savior to you for your project. That's a good point. That's the point. And it's frustration, not out of jealousy, but like, I want to be down for you. I want to ride for you, but come on. Like, honestly, if somebody said they want to be an event planner and they mid 30, no experience in it. 
out the blue, you playing one black card. Honestly, what would we say, girl? Okay, right. like, you drop it. <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Don't like, flash your dreams. She was developing that thing, huh, Ashley? <laughs> she was. And that may be her calling, but it's only right. so many times I'm gonna pay oh, your man. rent because you want to be oh. free spirit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, true, true. realistically, real, no, realistically speaking, and I just think the only thing, I, well, one thing I didn't like about that situation was the fact that Molly made that decision for Andrew. I really wish right, right, that right. she would have actually okay. talked to him to see yeah. what he felt because. You be so. I, I understand her trying to protect what she had going on. I'm really not opposed to that. Um, sure, but it was more like you made a decision on behalf of a grown man. When at the end of the day, it would have been his decision whether right. or not he felt comfortable with sure. helping your friend. And I think, but this is where, of course, all the communication falls through because of the fact that Issa was handling it up until this <laughs> point. But because they right. were going through their own thing, right? Neither one of them were really a breath of what was going on in each other's lives right and so yeah. you know and so and of course yeah. Issa, because this is this is one thing i think we forget to talk about with Issa. she knows she's low-key a free spirit failure trying to find it like she knows that yeah, yeah, she, 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 knows. Knows. And so yeah, she knows. What you don't want to do is be like i'm gonna do this great thing and it's like no i'm just gonna play it down yeah i'm, I'm working on something Right, I don't know. right. I don't know if I'm and I know how that is. It. Being a creative, I, I understand. Yes, I, I call myself. Yes, I call Lord. myself the. I secretly call myself the creative intellect, right? Because I, I'm a little smart. You know, I don't. You know, I'm a little smart, but I have a creative side as well, right? And right. my my both sides suffer if I don't feed them both. Mm. Right. So I have to feed yeah. that intellectual side, but I absolutely right. have to feed that creative side because that is right. where I get life. So I'm a combination. Um, but Keisha, what yeah. what you say, sis? What what you say? Team, I mean, <laughs> no, you know we, you said you was team Issa. Yeah, so speak on it. <laughs> yeah, so honestly, with the whole situation with the block party, I didn't agree for Issa to have gone behind Molly's back. Like she shouldn't have done okay. that. Like, like everyone has been saying, communication, communication, communication. <laughs> like, yes, you know, so once yes. she had told her, you know, I did not want to, you know, I no, I don't feel comfortable with asking him in the relationship. Um, she should have been understanding of that. And then she should not have, you know, basically gone behind her back and, you know, found a way. But the way mm -hmm. Molly dealt with the situation, yes. it was not cool at all. Like at her event, like you know how hard yeah. your friend has been right. working. You know, Absolutely. for this event, and then you're gonna come up to her and you're basically gonna fight her and supposed to be your best friend. So right. for me, I yeah. yeah, I'm like, no, that, that's not cool the way that she went about it at all. That was hard to watch. Go ahead. It was. Yeah. That was really it, it was it's hard to yeah. stomach. It's hard to stomach seeing some of that because like seeing fe like seeing female friendships and situations fall apart is something that we kind of see every day. Mm -hmm. So to see it in such an intense manner, I think we can all relate to a situation falling apart and, and really like them, if you all watch the show, you'll know, like they were like, what are we really, like what is, or what is it that we're truly, truly upset about? Like how did this right. all start to, you know, get to this big place and, and, and watching them fight right. with that. And it's something else I want to ask y'all about another scene that I didn't think was that serious, but people seem to be super, are about um the scene where she texted um Ooh. well wait let me let me make these comments let me make these quick comments <laughs> that the saint because the saints are chiming in so i want to make these comments on that subject so lisa said if Issa didn't mm -hmm. know molly's boyfriend that would be one thing but they were all friends so it shouldn't have been a problem mm -hmm. so it's not like she didn't know him so that's a good point and i mean she had that nathan thing going on which we won't get into that right now, right. but Nobody she it, <laughs> that made the situation going on. We will get to that, believe me. But but she so that makes a good point. So they were all kind of mutual friends, right? So they all kind of knew each other and had this situation. And then Renata says, let's also remember that he didn't exactly tell Molly from the beginning that he was assistant Issa. He knew Molly would probably have an issue with this. So where does the blame come in for? Um, her boyfriend not saying, listen, you know, he came to me. I mean, she came to me and asked me to help and I'm going to help her. 
are you cool? Right. But he did he did not do that because he knew that they weren't necessarily on good terms. But was he right? Was he right? Not to yes. tell he can he do anything. Said, he no, he said, I mean, yeah. you know, he <laughs> had a problem with it. That's what he said. He was like, I didn't think you would have been tripping about me helping your best helping friend. Her. And so when right. they walk into the car. So it was just like, <laughs> sis, like in this instance, you doing a lot. You doing a whole yeah. lot. Because it was a lot. Hard. Yeah. Don't, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I do have a problem with the behind the back thing. But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna lie, for Issa, it was business. Yeah, was like I had this thing planned to a T and my headliner yeah. fell through two days before. I gotta do what I gotta do. I got to do mm -hmm. something, but I got to get right. it. And I just hate right. that it happened that way. But yeah. it was just like I'm not gonna lie, Issa, man. I feel you, sis, because who else did she really know? Like, honestly, right? Because she couldn't talk who else could she what call on? Lawrence's yes, girlfriend, sir. what was her name? Uh, Condola, <laughs> Condola. <laughs> and she slick ghosted her too, so she was like, okay, um, yeah, all my connections she did. Right. happened. What we, but that slick, right. like, that slick, like, proves Molly's point. Like, whatever you need is always connected to me. Whether we just started Ooh, dating or not, no. everything you seem to need is always right. yeah. in some type of way. And yeah. that's a point I, I respect Molly because Molly's in therapy. And her therapy, her therapist says something very, right. very good. She said, Do you want to be right or do you want to be in a relationship? Mm, Ooh, Molly, Molly, right. right mm -hmm. as in the moral common sense situation. But do you are you going to be so stubborn? Is you rather prove to be right and watch your men and your friends walk out of your life, or do you want to just come to them mm. and mend it and have a relationship? Not with just men, but with your friends. Right. Too. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good point. But y'all, I saw this scene and it kind of threw me for a loop because Lisa and Molly were trying to reconnect, right? And mm -hmm. she mistakenly sent a text message to um she mistakenly sent a text message to Issa that was going to be for Andrew, right? So the text said, see, I'm trying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> super, 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 super upset. Storms out. I'm tired. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Storms out. They were having a game night, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if I would have been that upset if she... I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Would that have... Put you all in that space to be that upset that she said that she was trying with with y'all's friendship. Now she would have called me out my name. See that such and such. I'm trying, and you know, <laughs> I would be like, wait, this is about me. But if she right. says, "See, I'm trying," everybody tries differently. I can't judge the way you try to. Either right. we we gonna either try or we not. And so if I, I can't say, well, you trying is not up to my par for me. Because if she's trying, at least she's trying. I mean, what else do you want? Are you trying? I don't right. think, I wasn't yeah. getting that Issa was really trying. I just get that they were all there amongst mutual friends. And mm -hmm. they know that they have to be together because we know mutual people. And, you know, we have to be around each other sometimes. But mm -hmm. I get the whole mm -hmm. upset thing. How Issa got so upset? I don't. I didn't get. I don't know. I think it was something else, though. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really think that thing was that deep. I probably would have just texted back and been like, "Oh, all right, try harder." Or so I don't know. Something <laughs> or, yeah, I, I don't know. It just it wasn't really something sarcastic. Really yeah, yeah. Like, it you, wasn't that angry. Didn't call her out her name or say anything. Yeah. I mean, I think in that instance, Issa was being super sensitive and i mean let's just be honest if you have had a disagreement ongoing disagreement with a friend mm -hmm. person, yeah. in a relationship mm -hmm. on any relationship if there's an ongoing disagreement that first couple of interactions if you haven't really talked about it it's gonna be awkward let it be kind of scary, right like it's very uncomfortable yeah. so she had every right to kind of feel that way that way and clearly there would be tension in the room i mean that's just that's normal mm -hmm. Right. That, that's right. Yeah. That foolishness after that yeah. brunch, which I felt so disrespected after watching that brunch scene. I said, "What is this? So we're gonna sit down and not talk about nothing? We're not gonna say nothing? Right. Oh, that was yeah. We're gonna come to the table yeah. as if yeah. nothing happened. My friends said this. I was. I felt disrespected, and I hope the viewers yeah. did too. Because I say yes, <laughs> they writing this thing. They were writing it real good. Because when I saw the scene, I was like, "Yo, okay." We about to handle some stuff. And then it was like, yeah, girl, you know. And I was like, oh, what is all this treading the surface? What is this? Yeah. I was like, what is going right. on? 
Well, that's how some people fall apart. That's what I say. That's how some people like. Oh. You know, sometimes even in my family, like that, we upset about something, but we won't necessarily talk about it. We'll just start talking yes. again, you know, and yeah. that's right. Just we kind of, it's gone, you know, I, and I respect it. And my friends said the same thing. She said, we're not going to talk about this because they started out beefing, telling each other about yes. themselves. Like, oh, you know, right. Messy. <laughs> or no, well, let me tell you about your life then. Right, yeah. 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 Roots or whatever, but you know, I think the main goal in this, I'd say, team nobody because East is the writer, the creator, the producer, right. sometimes director, actress last, and right. she's creating all these complex relationships. And I feel like at first I was like, there's no resolve in any of them, mm. but I think she's just putting it out there. She's just putting mm -hmm. mental health issues out there. She's just putting, you know, the postpartum. She's just putting them out there, mental health issues with men. And it's not for results. Yes. It's just telling us what people yeah. going. Yeah, that's, I think that's so true. I, I agree with that. And I feel like honestly, this kind of shows shows me. I feel like shows everyone. We know that too in our we know relationship with other women that there mm -hmm. are issues that do come up, and that communication is important. Because some people, you know, they kind of negate or kind of forget, like, oh, you know, their friendship, and just think about like romantic relationships, and just forget how yeah. dynamic and how messy you know your friendship can be as well, and how you have to communicate. Because, right. and, it's, and it's funny, I remember me and my friends were talking about, you know, what would we do in that situation, you know, as well, would mm -hmm. we kind of like not talk about it? And for me, I'm the type of person that if there's an elephant in the room, like we have to discuss this in order for me to move yes. forward. Right. But there's right. other people who are like, well, I don't feel ready to discuss it. I may need a few, you know, a few weeks to discuss it. I'm like, for me, yeah. I cannot just sit there like, key, key, key in your face and knowing that right. I'm upset of what just happened. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, I think most of what I've seen, if this is if this is fair to say, which may not be, but most of the people that I see the team Issa team Molly dynamic is people or what I've discovered through it. People always pick on the people that have it all together. Yep. Right. So mm -hmm. Molly is the because Molly has what seems like her life together. She has the career. Right. She has the money. She has everything that she needs. But see, nobody's going to pick on the person that seems like they're the underdog or mm -hmm. seem like, I mean, Issa is trying to get her life together. But Molly, you should know better. Molly, mm -hmm. you too. And that's not fair how we do that to people, right? right? Because if you seemingly have what people, you know, consider everything together, then you're the person that has to take the hardest hits. And you're the person that has to deal with everybody's criticism and stuff like that. But when you're just trying to get your life together, you barely got a job, yeah, you, right. you know, Lift you know, you're giving black parties and stuff. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the black party. I thought it was dope. However, yeah. you know, I think we we tend to rally around the person who seems like they need the rallying, while sometimes we, mm -hmm. um, you know, beat up the person who just because they have their life together in a certain area doesn't mean that you know we get to beat them up. Oh, she's jealous. Oh, she's toxic. Oh, she's this. Oh, she's that. And if and actually I'm gonna let you talk. When we look at this, if y'all look through, if you look through it throughout, there were a lot of times that Molly picked up Issa's tab. There were yeah. a lot of times that Issa wouldn't have been able to go had Molly not said. I mean, there were scenes that they were in the grocery store. Right. And Issa would be picking up stuff and she would be like, I know you got me, or I'll always owe you. And maybe I mm -hmm. feel a little more um sympathetic towards Molly because I have been that friend. Mm. I'm I'm the friend that's always paying so that you can come with me. I'm the friend mm. that's always going to Houston's or going to Ruth Chris, and I'm fitting the bill so we you can eat with me. Ruth Chris, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See what I'm saying? So I understand. <laughs> I may not have all. Okay, sis, we gonna have to go when this Corona is over. You are gonna have to make your way to Nola. I'm gonna have to come up there or something. I, I, I got but there. yes, ma'am. Well, come on, sis. Come on, come <laughs> on. But yeah, so I feel I, I think I'm drawn a little bit to Molly because I understand. You know, my support for you may not always look like it should, and I don't. I don't give her an excuse for right. for doing the things that she did at the black party, for saying some of the things that she said. Somebody said, "Can I be your friend, Alicia? Girl, come on." <laughs> um, 
Come on, sis. Come on. But I understand how it feels, you know, when you just want your friend to be with you and you don't care if they don't have and you don't care if they don't, you're just there for them. But then you turn around and get all kind of backlash. And you're like, wait a minute. How did this, how do we even right. get here? I don't support you. Right. Sis, you wouldn't have eaten if it wasn't for me on some days. What do you mean <laughs> right. I wouldn't have support? I don't support you. You know, so right. I, I mean, I think it's a lot that goes into this um, friendship dynamic, a lot that they've shown, a lot that they've dealt with. And I want to talk about not just Miley and Issa, but I also want to talk about how female friendships, especially among Black women, are presented in media and stuff like that. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come, come right back and dive into those issues for a few minutes and then we're going to let y'all go. All <laughs> right. So hold on one second. Don't go anywhere. Yes. Asia Lakia here, and I'm super excited to announce that on Wednesday, July 22nd at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be going live with one of my very best friends, Renata Del Carmen, and we're going to be discussing a few topics on motherhood. So we are back and listen, y'all, I know some amazing people who are doing amazing things. My dear friend, Asia, she is, um, she's about to launch her, the millennial mom. So check her out. Even if you're not a mom, this is going to be a great conversation. You're not going to want to miss tomorrow on IG. I think it's at seven o'clock. I think so. Y'all just, y'all just get with that and make sure you tune in and check her out. Also, y'all saw all those goodies. I know that's a New Orleans based business, but she does ship. And let me just tell y'all. The cake is amazing. <laughs> I'm up a few pounds, right? Because every time she posts, I'd be like, sis, I need y'all. It's delicious. And her customer service is amazing. And she's a black owned business. So, you know, I'm all about female empowerment and I'm yeah. all about it. I love to eat. I ain't gonna lie. I love to eat. So check her out. Check her out. Um, so like I was saying, as I was thinking about this conversation, I started thinking about you know, shows and how black women and friendships are kind of represented in the media. And I thought about one of the shows I thought about was Girlfriends, right? So we had Joan, who was, you know, the main character and her friend of me really throughout. They, they, they were friends, but I don't know if that friend dynamic was as strong as that I guess frenemy is the best way to say it because that was really the dynamic that they presented throughout pretty much the whole show till it was a point that it was irreparable, right? They got to a point where they just couldn't be friends anymore and they decided to part ways. And why do you all think that when it comes to women, period, across the board, not just black women, but women, that there's always these, these friendship issues and they're always issues that we can't get beyond. Because when you think about it, think about one show with men who couldn't overcome the issues. If it wasn't like a drug thing or it wasn't like a, you slept with my wife or something like that, what, they don't represent men like this. But women are represented like this. And, and I just, I fight for my friendships. I fight for my friendships, but I don't think that that is represented well in media. Why do you think, why do y'all think that? I think that goes back to like the term hysteria, how they used to, call it. you know, they don't, they don't, no one describes a man as hysterical because that's a woman's term. Oh wait, her, I can't hear her mic. It's, um, it's a woman's term, they're emotional. That's just, you know, they're just, they're like that. We may be emotional, but we're also caring. We're also critical thinkers. We're also motherly and caring. We're also all of these other aspects. And to make mm -hmm. that emotion the only thing we have going for ourselves, especially black women, you know, we get the angry black woman that, you know, the attitude, the sister girl there. So you took my man basketball wives, you know, hip hop oh. this, hip hop that. Or all we do is walk around, put on makeup, sleep with each other's boyfriends, then get upset. Like that's the only thing that we have to do, you know, in life. And we don't even get, like you said, the whole girlfriends, like sex in the city, they had their beefs. 
but it's never mm-hmm. like black relationships. They had their beats, but at the end, it was them. Like it yeah. was all of them. They were down for each other. No matter what, we don't get those examples like that. Mm-hmm. Our examples mm-hmm. are so torn. I mean, you know, we slept with each other's man. It's so almost past repairable mm-hmm. that we don't even get good characters or strong characters or good storylines enough for us to even express. You know, a, a, a strong. There's nothing like a strong black woman and friends. Period. It's not. Period. I don't care be. I don't care. We, you know, we get into it, but I feel like everyone needs that. You know, and I just don't feel like we get that. We get that representation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like it's a constant, you know, mm-hmm. negative stereotype that they kind of just want to show. Like you were saying, they don't want to show the bonding, the sisterhood. Because I'm thinking about a lot of the reality shows. A lot of them, a lot of the women, they're frenemies. <laughs> they're not oh, friends. They're yeah. talking behind each other's back. There's this, and it's there's exhausting. That, and it is. It really is. But then they don't show. Like I think about my group of friends that you know I have like a sisterhood, a tribe that we check in on each other. We're praying for each other. You know, we're supporting yes. each other, and we're just like it's so crazy. Like we'll talk about all the shows that's on TV. But, like why don't they show like healthy? Of course, friendships are going to have you know their ups and downs. Of course, but as sure. far as healthy friendships. Right. Um, it's it's like rare and few that we do see on in the media, and it's really sad. It really is sad. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts, Darlin? Um, I would say I think some of it kind of goes into play. Someone kind of touched on it earlier. The whole idea of this strong black woman narrative, so to speak. While I think that it's it comes with good intentions, it's actually mm-hmm. been it's actually been done more harm to the black woman than it has done good, right? And so I think that that's how we begin to be depicted these ways in some of these television shows, because when you think of the strong black woman, right? Like that's how they depict us. Some kind of way this thing from this strong woman being this woman who's able to manage this and manage that has come over into this realm where the strong woman is, not only is she strong from a career standpoint, but she's like a bulldog, like in all aspects. Um, of right. life. And I think that that's how the narratives really have become that way in reality TV and on scripted television. I mean, when you think mm-hmm. about it, if you're not thinking, if you're thinking about beyond shows where they have girlfriends up against each other, if you just think about shows where there's a, a black woman is the main character, she's usually going to be depicted in that way. I mean, think about Scandal, right? Like she was depicted. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> All of these different shows that have been good television shows, right? But they show the black woman as this strong black woman. And, you know, we're never seeing a soft or feminine or, you know, this idea of feminine, mm-hmm. which is okay because a lot of the black women that I have in my life, like they, they, are, they, I don't look at them. Yes. I think they are a strong woman. Right. But I don't look at them. And the first thing that I would, I would not describe them. First thing I would not say to describe them would be, Oh, she's a strong black woman. Right. Like there's so right. much, there's so <laughs> much more outside of it like right. that the cherry on top piece right but that is right. not really, you know who who she is and i think that mm. that image has really been the cause of what we see now um mm. in television really yeah. yeah and i think ashley i'm gonna let you chime in and i think what bothered me and um uh, all of you alluded to the um the reality shows like i used to watch basketball wives i used to watch um you know, Atlanta Housewives. And what happened with me with, with Basketball Wives is literally, I was watching it and I was mid-episode. I was mid-episode and it, it was dvr And I literally stopped it, deleted it, and then, you know, stopped it from recording. Because I'm like, why am I watching this? What what value has this added to my life? Yeah, I, you know, some of some of those shows are our guilty pleasures. But when, when it gets to the point that that's all you all are representing, and what bothers me about it is Black women are executive producers. Right. Black women are, are somewhat responsible for these shows. And I'm like, I... That doesn't sit well with me. I, and I know like T and Tamara's show was canceled because they were too wholesome, right? Right. Um, Rev Run's daughters, Vanessa and um, Angela, their show was canceled because they were too boring. I, it doesn't have to be one extreme or the other, right? right. We are all multifaceted and we're all multi-layered. Most of us, that drama that they create amongst black women just to tear us apart. Right. I, I just feel like it's so divisive. 
right? Mm -hmm. And it's meant for us to look at each other in a way that's not good. And we need to change that narrative, especially in the media. Go ahead, Ashley. What's your thoughts, honey? I think it's it's really interesting that you bring that up because when you do look at that, it is, it's either one extreme or the other. Either it's all mm -hmm. cookie cutter or it's we trying to claw each other's eyes out. And like you said, first of all, we are people dealing with relational issues. And a lot of mm -hmm. times the people or the characters that are written, we don't want to acknowledge that they have trouble relating to themselves and dealing with themselves. So then right. you bring that to a relationship where I'm dealing with my stuff and you're dealing with your stuff. And now all of a sudden we're fighting, but we don't even really know what we're fighting about per se. We mm -hmm. don't really know what we're arguing about. But because of the ratings, okay, now we're going to play that up. We're going to play up the drama. We're going to, and it, in all honesty, some things can really just be handled in a conversation legitimately. Right. And that's um, because my sister, I love her, but she loves uh, Real Housewives and bad. And I was like, how do you watch that? I, I, uh -huh. I can't, I just can't do it. I can't do it because it's like there's, there's so much more to us as women than fighting over a man. There's so much right. more to us. There's, there's there's education, there's mental health, there's so many things that make up the greatness of who we are that mm -hmm. we 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 literally water it down to you, my man, and da 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 da. And it's like, yo, we're missing the fact that there are women out here, women of color out here winning, out here getting it. And then you have yes. the nerve to say that that successful narrative is boring. How so? Right. Why, why, why right. can't I relate to my sisters, uh, both blood and of the faith? Why can't I relate to them in a way where we deal with issues, we deal with each other, but we still respect each other and we still love on one another? Why can we yeah. not develop that Show narrative, that narrative. Show holistically? Yeah, because it's just right. it's yeah. hard. It's hard to do it in 25 minutes. I know it's hard to do it in Period. 25 minutes. And the, right. the narrative will stick out. Just nobody shoot me for this, please. Go ahead. But we do, <laughs> we do, we do know that people want to. I see got my guns loaded. Wholesome black people <laughs> because the Cosby Show wouldn't have been as successful if Man. that was a wholesome black family. Right. And it was right. one of the most popular shows mm -hmm. on television. Even Family Matters. And even like the Family Matters. I hate it, but like Fresh Prince. Right. Claire um, Huxtable is the. Supreme I don't hate Fresh black. Prince. I hate. Yeah, and family man, <laughs> and I just think Claire Huxley is the supreme <laughs> black strong mother. She yeah. was black, yes. but she yes. was, she was she was she didn't take no stuff, right? And she yes. was. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the truth, how it is. You yeah. know what else I love about Claire? She, hmm. while she was all of that, you know, they showed her as this career woman, um, you know, but you also got to see her being a wife, right, as well. Yeah. So that's what right. I love about it too, because. Ashley, you were saying something about, you know, we have black women with these really amazing careers and things of that nature. And I love that too. But I would also like to see someone depict just a black woman who is just lives in a lap of luxury, you know, and mm -hmm. is pampered as well, right? Because we because we deserve because that's real. All that. and it's real. Somebody else. That's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like and that's the thing. <laughs> no, they but, almost show black women as not. Um, we're too rough for that. They almost yeah. show us as, yeah. you know, or or I'm so busy taking care of myself. Or I'm listen, can't nobody take care of themselves better than me? But I also like to be taken care of. Come on, okay, okay. Fresh, okay. Fresh. I, so that's just the thing. I expect. I mean, I don't and do then, things for myself, but I don't expect you know future husband to be prepared <laughs> to do and to want to do. But I love, I love hard, and I give hard. So I'm gonna make yeah. sure he's taken care of well too. You know That's what I'm right. saying? But I, I think they, they show us show as this, they do not show that. They yeah, just they act like it. it's they all, don't. you know, toxic relationships with men, toxic relationships with women. You know, we too hard, we take care of ourselves. We don't need no man. I don't need no man. That narrative is <laughs> worn. Hey, poor me, child. Oh, <laughs> no. Because miss me. Look at first hey, parents. Hey, the first mother, the first mother <laughs> right. was a little more sister girly, but then they changed the mother. Forget the color. They changed right. her to this right. meek, docile. Yeah, yeah. like no what, balance. What? Like what happened? None. Like right. I was like, okay. I mean, she. I yeah. love the first Vivian. <laughs> the first Vivian was every woman. Like yeah. can we be honest, she was okay. every woman. She was mother. She was, yeah. she was right. wife. She kind of like right. Claire, right? She had all those things, mm -hmm. but she was not gonna let anybody run Rich over her. She was right. mom bear. 
you know, she was strong. And, and I think people don't really want to see that. And that speaks to how they want to see black women. Like even the Look, second now, mother had a career. Tired, 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 right. tired and working hard. That's that's what they that's what they want. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's <laughs> it. You know, barefoot, I, barefoot and pregnant. Either no. barefoot and pregnant, or you know, she's a career woman. She's all this, but it, it, we're never a mixture. Oh. We're never a combination of things. Right. There are never characteristics right. that makes make us up. We're just one or the other. Right. And that is sad that black women are depicted this way because black every black woman I know is every woman. Mm. Right. Can I be honest? Every black woman I know, whether she's a wife, whether she's a mother, where she's a career woman, whatever she is, she does everything well. And I didn't even intend for this really to be this, but every black woman that I know, every black woman on my timeline, sis, you are everything. You are every woman, whether you're wearing braids, whether you're wearing your natural hair, whether you're wearing a perm, whether you're wearing a weave, sis, you are every woman. Right, I see you all, you are strong, you are soft, you are elegant, even when you're being tough. That is what makes me appreciate you. We are fighters, right? We can bring the house down. Do you understand me? We out there protesting, we are out there having babies, like Beyonce said, we have the babies and then get back to business. You know what I'm saying? So we are such a treasure and that is not something that is depicted in the media and some people like Shonda, you know, she's helping to change the narrative, but there are still some things that I understand everything can't be crispy, clean and perfect. Right. But I am appreciative for women like her who are in the fight, you know, as it relates to the media and that's trying to show us a little bit different, you know, than right. what we have been depicted right. as, you know, everything is not good times. You know, right. everything, right. you know, is not that narrative. And like yeah. Aisha said, if we did not want to see wholesome black families, we would have had the Cosby show. But let's update it. What about Blackish? I yeah. love that. Blackish is a an excellent show that shows you know a family. Yeah, I, I love Blackish too. Love it, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. so I you know, if we didn't want to see that, then these types of shows wouldn't be successful. You know, but again, as black women, we always have to fight. So this is just another one of the fights that we have to fight for representation of us in the media, the way we deserve to be represented and for right. women to be loved, black women to be loved the way that we deserve to be loved. So any, any final thoughts, ladies, you want to add? any final thoughts, ladies, who you want to add to the conversation before we say good night? Think that's it. Ladies, I am so grateful that I had you on today. I'm finally glad we got to dive into the insecure conversation. It was a whole lot of fun. I'm gonna put y'all on the spot like I do everybody else. I hope y'all will come back on Churchy Chats and yes. be with me, be my <laughs> guest again. Um, I got all y'all info, all y'all info. I'm going to slide in y'all yes, and get y'all back on the show. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. So much fun. And let me say this. Let me say this while we're still on. Um, God has been so faithful and he's been so kind in this whole process of me doing this stretchy chest. I launched it in March. Um, March May 5th was my first show. And um, a lot of the people that I met, really, I, I truly just connected with them by, you know, finding them online and Christian influencers. But I'm grateful to God that not only he's given me these connections, but he's also connecting the, the guests that have been on the show. Um, that lets me know that God is doing something bigger than me. He's doing yeah. something that's, you know, outside of me. So anytime, let me just encourage somebody, anytime your vision is bigger than you and you, you're you frightened by it, that's probably what God would have you to do because it's not you. It's mm -hmm. him that's going to do the work and it's him that's going to yeah. get the glory from it. And I'm just so extremely grateful and thankful for everybody who's watched, everybody who's commented, everybody who's shared, everybody who's been a guest. I'm getting emotional, but I'm not going to do this, but I am just so extremely <laughs> grateful to God. <laughs> I'm so extremely grateful to God for his faithfulness towards us. And ladies, I love you all. Thank you so much for being on Churchy Chest tonight. Listen, y'all, we only have one week left in the She Shed. That makes me sad because the She Shed has been lit. <laughs> we have one more week in the She Shed in August next week. And then in August, no, that's July. Y'all help me. 
next month we are doing a men versus women. I don't want to say versus because that sounds Ooh. so combative. <laughs> you know, that sounds a little combative. But we're gonna, you know, touch on some topics that men and women have very different views on. So I hope you all will tune in. I hope you all will check it out and join mm -hmm. the conversation. I will see you all right here next week on Churchy Chats with the Church Girl. Bye. Peace. Uh, <laughs> that was great.